Coming up on Vet School Confidential. Tinker's ticker is malfunctioning. Good guy, it's hard to That's really big. She wasn't eating, and she was starting to lose a lot of weight. Just like something that sucks up out of her. And I'm just kind of upset because I just don't want to lose her. The best part about vet school is that there's just so many different areas of veterinary medicine and so many things to learn and it's just amazing what you can learn and different things that you can do in this profession. I guess I didn't realize there were so many different areas for veterinary medicine and I'm still not sure exactly where I want to go. <laughs> the extent of what we do in veterinary medicine, medicine and what you can do for an animal. You know, you, you put you, you put a, a crown, a silver crown <coughs> on a dog. People will put braces on animals, whether it's a pacemaker or a cardiac cath or cataract surgery. I'm more amazed at the, those guys under the scope working with such fine instruments. Yeah. I mean, I, I never knew that was possible before I got here. It's day three of the cardiology rotation. It's just like any other service here. They say, yeah, we have slow days, but as a student, I don't think you ever pick up on a slow day. Uh, it, it's pretty much go all the time. Okay. This time we want the heart. Tinker is a very small Maltese presented for a murmur. <laughs> it's impossible to get these little dogs to sit still. They're so little and squirmy, and he weighs a pound. Good puppy. Easier to get a great dane to lay on the table, I think. Tinker's owner is very concerned she doesn't want to lose this little guy. He's two months old, and when he was about five, six weeks, I noticed he felt different than his litter mates. You like that? I could feel his heart pounding more. So you're going to be all fixed up? You can come home with Mama? And they took him down for x-rays just to confirm it, but it's uh, PDA. Good guy, his heart's huge. That's really big. One, two, three, four, five spaces. Five spaces. That's good. Dr. Yeah. will be happy. Peyton ductus arteriosus, or PDA, may be the most common of the congenital heart defects. And if you got to have heart disease, this is the one to have. Right. You have two vessels coming out of the heart. One carries oxygenated blood, the other doesn't. Sometimes in these little dogs, they'll develop a condition where the blood will mix between the two vessels. <laughs> what we plan to do is go in and tie off this ductus, this patent ductus, or this vessel that should have closed within a week or two of uh, birth. Since that didn't happen, we'll go in and close it off and stop this uh, abnormal sh short circuiting of blood. I, I can't see the vessels here very well. You can see them pretty well here, and they're, they look pretty generous. We have to do everything we can to make you better. Yes, we do. Absolutely. <laughs> OK, you be good boy, Tanks. Just chewing on my lab coat for a while. <laughs> I'll charge you for that later, huh? OK. I think you're going to be a crowd favorite. <laughs> All right. I can take you up front and okay. get you on your way. Lacey, a 15-year-old Shire Hackney mixed horse, came in today and um, she was showing signs of um, ventral edema, which is um, she had swelling on her belly, underneath her belly, and also was going towards her front limbs as well. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> I had my vet out and uh, he examined her and she had pneumonia. And he told me to bring her here. Oh, I see this here. She's all swollen here, here, up in here. So, how quickly was that? In a day or she two? She started a week. Saturdays when Dr. Fish come out. Overnight. Overnight, her legs are swelled up here now. Just gone right downhill on me. She wasn't eating, 
barely at all, and she was starting to lose a lot of weight. She does uh, pool buggies for weddings and okay. stuff like that, so she's there for like show and okay. she has a, a partner that we keep with her at okay. all times. Um, she's not showing any ill signs she's at all. Fine. Yes. Okay. But that's fine. Okay. That's how she usually looks, nice and fat. You know? Yeah. Not like this. Yeah, I mean, you started noticing it ever since last Saturday? Yeah, I mean, you, you can't well, believe how fast she... She just like something there. sucks up out of her. And I'm just kind of upset because I just don't want to lose her. How long have you guys had her? Since she was a baby. Really? Do you want to go have a look at her yourself, Rachel? Can I? Yeah. And you can continue asking questions? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's your case. You work her out, <laughs> get some ideas, <clears throat> formulate a plan, and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Okay. Easy girl. Did you get really high plus on her? Like 80? Because that's what I got. Okay. Her owners are really worried about her because it's not common that you see this type of swelling around her belly and around her legs. So what things going on, Rachel? I was considering it that I was going towards congestive heart failure. Okay. Would it be right-sided failure or left-sided failure? Um, maybe right-sided. Say it with conviction. Is it right-sided or left-sided? It's right-sided. Good. <laughs> what else could be in there doing that? Um, Other types of masses? Possible tumor in. Okay, certainly a tumor would be in there. Lymphosarcoma would be the most likely one, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm scared I'm gonna fall. Right now I'm rectally palpating Lacey. I'm trying to feel the spleen. And it's not supposed to feel like that. So we felt masses mainly in her abdomen. There are masses kind of hard, round, multiple um, masses, and that could be, these could be tumors. Most likely what you have is most likely cancer in both the abdominal cavity and the chest cavity. That's our impression from physical examination. It is a disease that's pretty rare, but it does occur, and what we try to do is you know, let you know what we have and so you can make real, realistic decisions and what possible you new know, outcomes there may be. We're gonna have to clip probably a little bit of hair off the That's side right. of the chest and stuff. So. When we return, there should not be any visible fluid in, in the belly and we've got a lot here, okay? Well, if they don't have what you're doing for the surgery down, he'll tell you to scrub out and go to the library and read about it. Play the lamb next for the doctor. What are you doing? This is Tinker, the little Maltese with the PDA. Uh, we're gonna go in and surgically fix that. We're heading down to the prep room to put a little catheter in this little guy and get him under for the surgery. Lacey had a guarded prognosis that um, she did have these masses, which most likely is cancerous. And we wanted to confirm it. And so we did an ultrasound. There's a lot of fluid in there. 
-hmm. All that black stuff is fluid in her belly. It's basically swimming in a fluid. There should not be any visible fluid in, in the belly. And we've got a lot here, okay? And then these masses start to show up. Basically, we know she has cancer and we know she really didn't have that much, much more longer to live. Tinker's ticker is malfunctioning. I'm gonna ligate the ductus and fix his little problem so he can grow up to be a healthy dog. This is about twice as big as the smallest one I've ever done. Dr. Aster's a good guy, but he's been known to quiz people if they don't have the approach and what you're doing for the surgery down. He'll tell you to scrub out and go to the library and read about it while he does the surgery. You'll make an incision <laughs> what I understand, right in the middle of the fourth, between the fourth and fifth rib. All right. What am I trying to avoid? Intercostal vessels All right. that are on the caudal side. What are the landmarks the for the ductus? Landmarks for the ductus? Mm -hmm. uh, the, it is uh, ventral to the aorta, dorsal to the pulmonary artery, and uh, medial to the uh, vagus nerve. Uh, I think I can do it now. OK. The heart's pumping three, four times as much blood because of this short circuit. So most dogs, and people for that matter, with this disease don't survive much beyond um, youth. In the case of small breed dogs, usually they, they don't make it more than uh, six, eight months. It's exciting because you're, you know, you're doing cardiac surgery. One, two, three, four. Okay. Fourth space. Okay. I mean, you get to see the inside of the chest. You breathing for him? We're lucky. Okay. Crank it. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a great view here. Time for a little light. What's that? Is this pulmonary artery? Nope. Okay, we're... Okay. And out. this is right here. The vagus. That's the vagus nerve. So where's the duct that's going to be? Point right. to it. Right. Under right there. The okay. You go in, you find the two big vessels, and there should be a, a bridge across where it's mixing and you just simply put a suture around them and crush them down, stopping the flow between the two vessels. The pulmonary artery is right here, and the, uh, the uh, ductus is this structure right there. So, let's go get it. Get the uh, sutures ready. Even though you open them up as far as you can, it's still only an inch and a half or two inches wide, so there's a limited view that you get. They're about to tie this sucker off. That I get it. All right. Pulmonary arteries already started to shrink down. Time to get out of Dodge. This is my first heart surgery, and it was a success. It was a good, good experience, and it's neat to see that. Hey, buddy, your tongue's sticking out. You're okay. Just stay there and get warm. When we return, Lacey has cancer throughout her body. I want to cry so bad.
Lacey has cancer throughout her body. You know, there's not much we can do for that. It's fairly advanced cancer and basically would be terminal disease in people. As a vet student and, and veterinarians, we realize, you know, it's not just a quantity of life, it's the quality of life. I believe it's selfish to um, keep an animal going because, you know, you care about it and you, you don't want to let it go. It's involved. She's full of it then. Yeah. She's full of cancer. She really is. Okay. Yeah. My number one recommendation, she needs to be put to sleep and in a fairly timely fashion. Difficult on the owners, but again, try to be as realistic as possible. You know, it's one of the real advantages we have in veterinary medicine is we have the capability for humane euthanasia. That animal doesn't have to suffer for another month and waste away and die on its own. We can end that last month a little early and make it more pleasant for the horse, the owners, and everybody involved. If, if I wanted to pursue not doing it now, I'd probably just load her up on cortisone and do that for three or four days until you can get the arrangements made that you want to get made. You know, it's tough because I know... You, if you were to do this here, just by chance, if you were to do this here, would you take that cancer out of her when you take that apart and use it for study to bite cancer in other animals or and or people? Each case of cancer we see gives us more information. What we would do is take a piece of the cancer, look at it under the microscope and confirm what type it is. Probably the outcome that would be of greatest benefit is for the three students that helped work her up today with us to actually see what is inside there and then their approach to horses like this in the future. I think I'll just leave her here. Can you just leave her here? Okay. I think that's probably the smartest decision. If they could have done anything for her, they did. They did told me, you know. But, uh, you can't, you just, I don't want to see him go through all that misery. You know, you could see that she was another week or so what she'd look like, you know. She's overnight, how she swelled up. So. Shoes. Sure. We would put her to sleep fairly quickly. Okay. Do you want to be there for that or not? I'll be here. Okay. Okay. Let me have the red card then. I just want to spend some time with her. Okay. Tinker's heart surgery went really well. Wow, that's a good boy. I don't hear the rumor anymore. Must have worked. <laughs> You're looking pretty good. Let go. There you go. Good prognosis. It's excellent prognosis. Uh, he'll, he'll do just fine. OK, here we go, huh? Oh, where's my baby? Oh, here goes my baby boy. Oh, who's that? Hi, Tinker. Oh, my sweet mama, she's cold. Oh, poor baby. You forgive me. It's kind of funny. Sometimes you'll see um, people bring their patients here, and when they say goodbye to them, they'll be, you know, all googly moogly and schmoogly and kissing their dog and stuff like that, and, and they show more affection to that pet than they would to their spouse. Mm -hmm. It's so nice to see the human-animal bond. Animals just make your world go around, I swear. Okay, Tinks, let's go home. No playing with the other dog. No, definitely not. <laughs> Thank heavens this is something that can be fixed. When we return... I got through it and... <laughs> I tried not to um, 
you know, show my emotion. So I just remember all the good times with her. <laughs> I helped with the euthanasia of the horse and I had never done that before so um, it was a little shaky to do but I got through it and <laughs> I tried not to um, you know show my emotion you know when I was doing the process of the euthanasia for the horse and um, afterward the horse died the owner did ask me she's like that was really hard wasn't it I'm like yeah it's a tremendous responsibility and one that I'm grateful for that we have as veterinarians to be able to put our uh, clients pets out of misery and and treat our clients too in a sense emotionally you know I think right. it's uh, it's not just about the animals it's about the people too it's definitely about the people that's what I just wonder sometimes you know, is it is it okay to like you know show start crying or if it's better you know to hold her hand or you know it's gonna be okay or I think crying with the owner is very appropriate, as, as long as it's, uh, and people disagree with that, but that's just my personal opinion. I agree with you. And you just feel that bond that they have and, you know, the loss of that pet and you sort of, sort of empathize with them a little bit. And Absolutely. Everyone's, sure. you know, lost yeah. a pet and knows yeah. how that feels. Yep. Yeah. I'll never find one like her, you know, to replace her. I just remember all the good times with her. <laughs> yeah. We done the right thing for her.